Today, how to draw the most gorgeous, beautiful lizard on the whole entire planet. I am the snake artist and my mission in life is to get people to appreciate art and wildlife. Yes, today we are drawing the bearded dragon. Welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to draw a bearded dragon at the request of Julian, Andy, and a special thanks to Brady because of his support of my channel. Let's get started. I'm star what is this? A 3B. Sounds pretty good. 3B pencil, nice and soft. Right, we're going to start off. We're going to do the head of a bearded dragon. So this is going to be his mouth. So it's sort of two, it's like a curvy letter V. Slightly bits like that. What can I say? I'm going to work with some shapes here. I'm going to do a shape there and a shape there. Let's draw a line across here. So this is his nose. His eyes are going to be here. In fact, just here, a line there and a bit of a circle there. About here. And we're going to do an ear opening here. I can make it like a zero that way. And so there's a bit of a gap there, a bit of a gap here. This is going to be one corner of the back of the head sort of thing. I'm not explaining myself very well. About halfway here and here we're going to do a slight curvy, like a bracket there. So the back of the head sort of comes back. That's the back of the, fr the frill really. Here, a bit of a bracket like that. You can sort of see the mouth starting to take shape. I'm going to do like a half letter U there, bit of the bottom jaw there, and here, bit of a bracket there, it's another lump there. Now, straight down from there, and round from here, we're going to do a big bracket like that. Now here, we're going to do a little bracket that way, and a really big bracket coming this way and his back's there no, hang on his back's about here so his back and his front legs gonna come out here somewhere we're not gonna really worry too much about that front leg just do a little bit like there just a suggestion sometimes when you're drawing you want the main focus to be somewhere we don't pay too much attention to what's around it sometimes that works really well and sometimes it doesn't now Here's the bit that gets a little bit complicated. So, see I've done that little bit of a bracket there. I'm going to do pretty much a line from there to there. Now I'm going to make these lines fan out from here to here. So the best way to do this is rather than do that and get messy, we're going to put some lines sort of in the middle there. Now these ones here, so about evenly gap there and there, they're going to come back to this point here. This one here, watch what I do here, because there's a bit of a lump there. I'm going to go a little bit like that and then like that. So once I've done that it's pretty easy to fill in the gaps without looking too wrong. And one like that. This side here, a bit tricky, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a bracket like that. Over here we're going to do a bracket. And you see that's wide there but it comes in here. And here. So sort of the same. So it's fanning out. And then just go the lines between Now where these sort of come outside the frill, we can just put like a little letter of these like this. So little V-shaped spikes coming out. And this is just the penciling, we're going to go over this with a bit of ink. I 
can make a decision here. Now we've got more letter V shapes here. Come along the back. They come in so close they're almost a zigzag. What I'm going to do here is sort of curvy. They're going to have to line up with that, so I might do one in the middle. There, there, something like a spider's web, isn't it? Now, same here, we want a curve from there to there. We're going to probably pick the middle somewhere. And then go a bit straight there. And like that. Now we can do the ones in between. Here they're getting closer and closer together. I'm going to do a lot of detail on this one. Now, line there. Another V shape line there. Just colour that in a bit. Here we've got some teeth. It's funny, they sort of start off a little bit small like that and then they get a bit bigger. Give them some big teeth. They, they bite pretty well too, these guys. Speaking from experience. Now the top lips sort of coming over there here. Watch what I'm going to do here. Curve around that bit off there, a little bit like a snake's a little bit like a snake's uh, front lip. And here we've got some bits of teeth showing there too. And I like to put a stringy bit. <laughs> the stringy bits uh, which Lady Jennifer thinks is hilariously funny. So when we ink that we're going to leave like a little white stripe there. It's pretty good for drawing things like monsters and that because it looks like they're salivating. So here and here it's almost like a Y shape. And that bit there, just a little bit of shade there. Now the eye. In here we're doing put in a circle. Come that in. Going to put light bit around that. Go darken around that bit. Before we do a bit of a bracket like this. Shade both sides. Nice big heavy eyelid to protect its eyes when it's running through the scrub. And a bit of a bit under there like that. And I might even put another bit of a bracket there. I'm going to smooth this off a bit, back of the head there. See, so I make these shapes and then I just alter them a bit. So here, well, I had a straight line, bending it there, and I'm um, bending it there. So, and here, so a slight curve like that. And like that. Now I've got some more scales to do here. I'm going to cross hatch. Lazy, I know, but still can work sometimes. Cross hatch down here too. Make that go around. If you want to take your time a bit, you can actually make that more brick-like. We'll see what happens with the inking. Now, here we have the ear. It sort of has a cross hatch like this. That side. And here you can sort of see a bit of a cross hatch going like this. Now, a big job. If I go too fast, just pause the video and catch up. Each one of these little corners becomes a little letter V like this. This one's going to need a lot of rubbing out. We'll see. I'll put some 
hear the outlines on all this soon, but at the moment we're just marking it out. Where the spikes come up here, you make them go smaller, so the tiny little V's here, they get bigger as they come out onto the frill there. Here, as they get closer to here, they get smaller as well. So smaller as they get closer to the mouth, bigger as they get further away until they sort of become quite big spikes, which I might even, I don't know, we'll leave them that size. I was thinking of making them bigger, but they'd be more cartoony then. I'll draw on a sort of a semi-realistic illustrated one. One that you'd probably pass off in a illustrated book on reptiles I guess probably easy because it doesn't really look like any other lizard much although there are different species of bearded dragons I'm just drawing the common one that you sort of see running around in northeastern uh, Australia this side is going to give a little bit of shade Right, we're about ready to burst out the ink. It's so funny about Lizard Week. <laughs> Lizard Week. Lizard Week on the Snake Artist channel. <laughs> Lizard Week. Cool, lizards are cool. We love lizards. And we're back again with one of my favourite little ink liners. Look, you can use a marker pen if you want. I just enjoy using paint brushes. And here we go. Okay, to outline that part of the mouth. Doing some more outlining. I'll probably speed up parts of this. I'm outlining some of the most important bits that need to be quite bold. Remember, go too fast, pause the video, catch up. And you don't need to use a fine brush like this, I just like it. You can use a thick marker pen if you want. Then go to a thinner marker pen and then even a thinner one. I get similar results, I just like the, the brush strokes. If you're going to be a professional artist, I would encourage you to actually get brushes and nibs. If you're learning or just doing it for fun, don't wait to buy this stuff, just use marker pens until you do get the stuff. You still learn a lot by following along. And remember that everybody's art is different. Even if you are copying, yours is going to look a bit different. In the same way that if you sign your name, it's also going to be different. See in the eye there, leave a bit white at the top. You can see I left some strings in the mouth there. That often happens when a reptile hasn't had a drink of water for a while. It gets very dry and the mouth gets so sort of almost claggy, gluey like. But it is a good thing to do if you want to make it look like a hungry animal. Because, uh, if you're, like I said, you're drawing monsters, you want to make it look like it's salivating, like it wants to eat something. That's always a fun thing to do. Right, now change. So now I'm going over with a nib pen. It's just a bit finer than the paintbrush.
it's always good to know what you're drawing. If you want to pause the video and check out, I'm going to put a link to a video here of Lady Jennifer looking at the frill or the beard of a bearded dragon. And that sort of, you can understand what it's like. That helps if you've got a pet one, even better. So, yeah, a lot of drawing, if you can experience the animal, makes the drawing go so much better. Just putting some little bits there so it's like scales. Do the same here. Now you see where I've got this cross hatching? I'm not just going to cross hatch, I'm going to pretty much do this. So where you've got something like that, little curve. Where they join up, you put the occasional circle or, or dot. This sort of blends in much better with the stuff. Sometimes we do just put in the cross hatching just for the ease of it. But if you do this. Like I say, it does work a bit better. Put a line here. Right here, I'm putting the scales all the way around because it's a bit of a dark bit, and then the scales sort of come out to a lighter bit where you're only just sort of doing just the underside of the scale. A few dots to blend it in, and a few places. Here, we've got those little wrinkles there. So sometimes it's about getting things to match up. Sometimes little dots or dashes will just do it. Sometimes that's all you need. Do a bit coming around the mouth. I don't want the mouth to be smooth. It's sort of rough and gnarly. And put the occasional circle here. Okay. Occasional little circle here adds a bit of interest. I think I will just have to go to the brick wall here. So I'm just sort of doing under those. Now I'm going to sort of in the alternative space. Because I used a little bit. A bit like a brick wall. That's pretty good. Here I'm going to do some dots. It's the inside of the mouth, which is all yellow. Bit of a zigzag line here because we've got the teeth on the other side. I might just do some more stippling dots there. So it fades off into the darkness of the mouth. Now the nose is sort of actually in here somewhere. Dark patch there. So, top, we're sort of doing these sort of flat brackets like this. Don't want to do too much because we want to keep it fairly light. We might do the occasional circle and then the occasional dot. Just to make things look a bit rougher. See what I'm doing here is a few curved lines just to describe certain parts. So I really like that. So you can try and get the feeling of the shape of this. Now these blank bits we want to fill up. Just 
doing some little bits like this, the occasional circle, the dot, a dash, just to fill up and give a texture to the skin between the spikes. Back at the head here we might actually do a little bit of cross hatching. So you've started this drawing as a beginner. I think we're actually getting quite advanced here and a lot of it's just persistence. You gotta not give up and just keep going at it. Now back here, just a little bit of something. Like I said, we don't want to put too much detail on this because this is just like, you know, setting the scene a bit. Bit of a leg there, bit of shade here. And this is where we can use the rough cross hatching. And a couple of bits like this. Occasional circle. Because we're in a game, we don't want to do too much. I don't want to dwell on that. It's all about the face. face is looking lovely. So I'm going to go away and hit this with a hairdryer and come back and do some more shading on it. You just got it fully extended. It's all nice and spiky. Wait a minute. I love a good beard. <laughs> And I'm back. So now I can gently rub out some of these lines. I'm not rubbing them all out. Oh man, that always happens. There's always a bit I miss. All right. Yeah. So see how I sort of cope with this now. See, so yeah, I was just rubbing out. A bit of ink wasn't quite dry. So, what am I going to do about that? Let's have a look. The bad thing is we have a line going this way and it should be going that way. So, I'm going to strengthen this. Okay, I'm going to strengthen this one over here. And maybe just do some lines coming out this way. In a moment I'm going to hit it with Shade these ones here, make these stronger. I'm going to hit it with a wash. So, Chinese brush. Some water. So I've got a little bit of water. I'm going to get the tiniest little dob of ink in the water to make it dirty. I don't think I've done many washes on a tutorial. So here we go. Now I suppose you could just you know, colour in bits with a pencil if you want. But I like the wash. You can see this is sort of like just greying up areas. Now this here, I'm going to Make the wash a little bit jittery and uneven in this spot. So I'm doing stripes there to try and overcome that. What well, I might have to do is actually highlight it with a bit of um, white, I guess. We'll see how I go. Make it a lot darker on this side. So if you're doing pencils, you might just have to go a bit harder with the pencils in certain areas. We'll find a black pencil. Black and greys mixed together. There, that's that side. A bit dark in the air. A bit dark down here. So this is our solista hint of the body. I see we don't want to do too much about the body, it's all about the head. Dark 
darken here, darken behind here to make this bit stand out, darken in here. Okay, now I'm going to go actually a bit here too. Okay, hit this with a hairdryer again. What I love about the bearded dragon is just how brave this little guy is. You know, he's just there, he's flattened out his beard, he's looking impressive, he's just standing his ground. And he's just, you know, he's an absolute beautiful... Oh, oh, oh you bastard! And we're back, and I've got some colouring in pencils. I've picked so like a grey, a black, a brown, an orange, a bright yellow, and a sort of a sandy, ochre colour. So, here we have a bit of yellow. This should be a nice sort of subtleness about this, hopefully. Make that nice and bright. Pop a bit of orange around the eye here. Now I'll lay down some of the sandy colour. It's just sort of a yellowy, golden colour. And the way I have it, it's sort of like there's some light bits and dark bits. It's sort of looking a bit patchy. It sort of unifies the whole thing. Look at the same problem there. Alright, handy hint. Shade in the direction of the spikes. If it does smudge like I've done here, it might make it all right. There we go. What is that? That's pretty good. The Jess art. Oh, nice. All right. Now a bit more brown. I notice how a lot of the bearded dragons, certainly up the east coast, the northeast of Australia. They tend to be sort of like a dull grey brown with sort of like ye golden bits through them. Beautiful colour. I love seeing natural lizards. I'm not real keen on seeing all the stuff where people breed them without scales or they breed albinos. For me, I just love seeing stuff in the natural world. Here we go. To me, the natural blending into the background is more beautiful. Because drab browns and greys are beautiful. Bright colours are beautiful when you see how it works in nature, if it works in nature. So if you've got some animals which are brightly coloured, some reptiles, how does that work? Well this one's got a bright coloured mouth and that works because it scares away. Uh, something's going to give it a hard time. You get this big neck which grows up bigger and looks more savage. Then you got this flash of yellow, sort of like this. And that makes it a very, very cool animal. So you see how that sort of unified it a bit? I like to have a bit of a scribble and then sort of go in hard. So it looks like you sort of don't care. If you have that don't care look to it, it's pretty cool. So black. See here, we've got this strong line there. And then it sort of should blend in a bit. So I'll put black just to soften the lines in certain places. So that softens that line a bit. Uh, probably the same here. So it's like blending the heavy lines into the drawing. Shadow here. And that unifies the drawing. So it doesn't look so patchy. It's just difficult because bearded dragons be patchy things. So this is sticking out here. What I'm going to do to cover that up is to make it look like it's meant to be. So shade here. So it's already taking your eye away from that a bit. Come down here. A bit more shade. And that makes it look like that's meant to be. So I'm shading under those spikes. It's real mixed media on this one. And 
here to open this in a bit more, especially under the spikes. And so you see it's starting to take your eye away from this mess here by making the others just blend in so it looks like it's meant to be. So when you do make a mistake, sometimes you can rescue your drawing just by making it blend in, unifying it with the rest of the drawing. You might just get away with it. So you're not noticing that as much now because we've got this and it's actually making those spikes stand out in a good kind of way. Okay, I'm softening that edge there, see? We're just bringing that in. It's looking much better. Darken in here a bit to make that mouth really stand out. So this bit's very, very dark just here. Good one. That's just about it. To darken this, soften this a bit. So you can even cross hatch with your colouring in, which doesn't hurt. Give these ones a little bit of shade under it. So black, black pencil works a treat. I think we're getting something that looks a bit like a bearded dragon. Darken this bit here in. And there's our bearded dragon. Now look, I started this off as a beginner's level. And then I think we went pretty intermediate. I thought it's just uh, like putting more and more on it. So it's not really going advanced in you know, the difficulty in drawing, it went advanced in the not giving up and continuing until I've sort of got what I want. Bearded Dragon, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this Bearded Dragon video where we look at the most beautiful, gorgeous lizard in the whole entire planet. It's the most wonderful lizard of them all because it's called the Bearded Dragon, isn't it? So, enjoy more videos coming right up after this one on Lizard Week on the Snake Artist channel. It's so funny about Lizard Week. It's Lizard Week. Lizard Week on the Snake Artist channel. <laughs> lizard Week. Cool, lizards are cool. We love lizards.